tips or various things you need to think of while planning for your app launch. It will give you various tips <laughs> with respect to how you need to interact with the press, how you need to plan for various steps leading up to it and so on. Uh, I'll just quickly introduce the people on the panel. The panel is being led by Raghu Mohan. Just give him a quick hand please. This is Raghu. He's from Hacker Earth. He's also ex your story. Uh, Raghu is also fairly involved with the BLA Droid community. So he sort of brings both knowledge of being on the other side of the world, being a part of the press, if you will, as well as knowledge of what a lot of the Android developers do. Uh, next, if Nishchul, hey. if you please come up and join us. Nishchul is a founder of Just Unfollow, an incredible success story where they've gone from zero to three to five million users in a very rapid period of time. And he's got some amazing insights about how he's made that journey from launch to hitting those big numbers, which he's going to share. Uh, Satya is from ClearTrip. And Satya heads product at ClearTrip. He'll be sharing perspective of how a big company plans for that launch. And Vinil is a co founder of Dexitra. Dexitra as well has an interesting story of app launches, how they got to several million users with both with um, their dialer app as well as with, um, what was the name of the other app? Friday, thank you, Friday. So um, with this, guys, give them a big hand so we can get started and I'll turn it over to Raghu. Oops, my God, sorry about that. <laughs> There's one more chat. I, I, so we're, I, I'm just so happy to have Varun here. Varun is from Phone Arena. It's a world famous blog. I think many of you have probably ended up using Phone Arena at some point. Raghu, uh, so Varun being here is really a privilege here. He's got some fantastic insights. You've probably seen him on TV as well. He's a gadget guru who's a part of a number of programs where big product launches happen. So it's a great opportunity to hear from him insights about big launches that he's seen and what he thinks works and why. All right. Over to you. Thanks, sir. Can can everyone hear me? No. You turn it on. What about now? It, I guess it is on. Okay. Okay. Much better. So, uh, actually, Arvind, before we start, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to kick off, uh, you know, the first session and the business conference. It's like, a, you know, it's, it's a privilege and an honor. <laughs> uh, you know, I guess. How many of you here are app developers? Just show of hands. Uh, how many of you are on? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how many of you are on the market uh, and uh, you really want to get to that one million plus number? Yeah, that's lesser hands than the number of app developers. <laughs> <That's weird. laughs> the rest must have crossed already. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's it's, it's like uh, I, I guess uh, you know we've all learned this in chemistry. There's this thing called activation energy, right? Uh, it's the amount of energy required to create a chemical, make a chemical reaction happen, right? Sometimes what happens is that you know uh, there are some elements have high co uh, activation energy, and it requires a lot of external forces to make the reaction happen. That's pretty much the state right now on the App Store, right? What happens is that there are a million apps on your you know, million is a lot of zeros, okay? And of which a very small quantity of apps have got a large number of downloads. So if you are launching today, good luck. Okay, <laughs> I, it, there's a good chance that your app is going to get lost. But on this panel, there are about three plus one guy who knows how it works, uh, who have actually fought this battle and made it up there to the top. So, you know, the questions today is going to be about you're starting out now. How are you going to get to that one million? Cumulatively, on this, there are about ten million downloads that these people, these three, have got on their uh, under their belts. This guy had five. You no, post. I got two. Two, two three, <laughs> three. Three. Okay, fine. Uh, that is at five. Okay. Dexitra is at five, and uh, you know you're close to a million as well at Clearter. So, you know, how do we start? And I think it all starts with the app, right? And I'm going to start uh, with Nishal. Nishal, what according to you is a good app? Uh, something I use every day would be a good app. I guess. Um, but if you if you were to look at the Android ecosystem now, right, right now, the way it is. I think something that is free and gets my work done is a good app. You know, that's how we, I, I don't know, as a consumer, I would look at a good app that way. And something that's also designed well, it does not, you know, really, uh, drain my battery, I guess, to start with. 
and uh, yeah, I think that's about the parameters I would look at when I d download an app. Well, Satya, Cleartrip is free and gets my job done. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> uh, am I audible properly? So, uh, I think uh, uh, there are two things uh, to look at a uh, uh, good app uh, when I look at an app. Yeah. So, one is that uh, either it's solving solving a unique problem. Uh, or it's solving the same problems uniquely. So I think that's the two parameters that I consider uh, for calling it a good app. Daniel, we probably had this conversation before, but what's a good app? But am I audible? Who's my side? Can you hear him? Any? Maybe turn it. That's um. Yeah, cool. Right. Sorry about that. Um, for me, um, a good app is something that uh, you know addresses a real question. It need not be a daily use case thing, um, but when you need it, you know this app has to do the job. So uh, that's how I, I would look at it. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, free or paid, uh, but you know it has to solve my problem. And uh, Varun, I'm going to ask you, uh, what is your favorite app? Um, and why? What makes it? I think it's particular. So I just wanted to like uh, share my view. So basically, an app which I constantly use. Like uh, a lot of developers get uh, kind of uh, confused about the number of downloads and everything. But at the end of the day, the downloads don't really matter. It's about how many active users you have for your application. Right. So if I'm having an app on my home screen, that's what matters. So rather than like having it somewhere hidden under the hundreds of apps I have. So for example, on my phone, I have like about 200 apps. How many do I really use? Probably 10. So I think that's something which really matters, and I think uh, as an app, like doing something for me useful, really matters. And that's uh, what probably is. cool. So roughly, it's an app that solves solves a problem. It's free. It's uh, something. It doesn't have to be free, as in. But I think the unanimous vote is that it's got to solve a problem, and more importantly, doesn't matter. The downloads don't matter. It's about how many people use it every day, right? So coming to the pro part of app development as such. You know, uh, and I'm going to ask, the, this is a very relative question, but I want your perspectives on this. You know, Justin Follow, the app as it is right now, what what was the time that it took since the time you thought, okay, this is the app that I want to make and to actually put it out on the market? How long did it take? So uh, the, uh, the first version of Justin Follow went out in like about a, uh, about two months, I guess. Two months. Uh, that happened when uh, my colleague who wanted to do it, he had no knowledge of Android, so he learned it, he built it and he launched it. Right. So that was around two months right. in total. Uh, if we had to go the way we actually envisioned the app, it would have been like six to eight months. Right. But we had to cut down on a lot of features and then just get it out. And, and do you think that was a good time? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, uh, I think from from ideation to getting the app out, it should be an ideal 45 days to 60 days thing where you get it out. But just make sure you get out just a few features, but then get them out right. I mean, the moment something goes wrong, and especially on the Android store or anywhere on the mobile platform, the problem is these reviews are they, they're just like getting a tattoo done. Once they're out, they're there forever. <laughs> and you, 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 you know, you screw up your features. People write bad reviews; they never come back to, you know, maybe rectify it. So it's unlike the web where we develop and we launch fast and we fail, we break. On Android, I think it's important to like just stay that way. You know, make. Build it right. That's more important, I guess. That is going to be an interesting panel on that a little later today. Uh, at ClearTrip, you know, you're a bigger company. I guess you've got you follow a lot more processes than what a startup does. Uh, factoring in those accounts, what do you think is a good, uh, you know, go-to-market time, and what did you actually take? Uh, so I think uh, uh, you're not that uh, uh, big a startup as yet to follow so many processes. So I think at core we are still. Uh, uh, a startup, uh, so I think anything uh, within uh, three months should be good. If uh, your product plan is going beyond three months, uh, then it's it's too huge uh, a project to launch in one go. Probably then it's it's required to be broken into bits and pieces. Uh, so that's uh, if it requires three months, then that's not an MVP that you're planning. Right. right. Vinil, yeah. you, yours is very weird. You've got one mammoth app and a lot of small, small, small apps around. Mm. So how do you define a Good go to market. I mean, uh, for for our case, uh, from ideation to uh, to delivery, 
it took us like two years. Uh, yeah, because uh, this is Friday, right? Yes, yeah, it's Friday. So uh, we started in 2010, and and that time Android was like uh, you know coming out, and it didn't have so much APIs that that the Android platform supports today. So uh, a lot of things we had to do ourselves, and and uh, a lot of optimization, a lot of you know initial version it used to drain battery a lot. So uh, I mean, it's, it still does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, what we had to do was uh, you know. We had our own patents there because we came up with our own algorithms of smart battery usage and all that. But it, it wasn't there on Android before. So it took us two years to iterate and iterate and, and, and then come to an actual uh, launch. And then it had a lot of machine learning to do, a lot of artificial intelligence suggestions and happening. So uh, it took us two years. But then uh, we built another app, app layer. It's called Dial App. Uh, but for that, you know, again, the turnaround time was like over two and a half months. One and a half months. But, uh, but that's how much radically the landscape had changed. Uh, the support system in place had evolved so much. So uh, so right now I would agree uh, to what he is saying. That, you know, a good turnaround time should be around two to three months. And, you know, Varun, has there been a ch time where you've spoken to somebody that they're building an app? What was the fastest that you've heard of this day? Probably a week. A week? Yeah. <laughs> I think some great apps probably are built out of, like, the top of the head. They have an idea, they get it out and... But as Mistral said, if the first app, like the user experience is bad, they're going to never trust that app again. Right. So I think it's a fair balance. You need to have a fair balance between getting it out fast and also getting it out in a, like a, at least what we 90% perfect, uh, perfect some stage. It can't be 100% perfect. I think the, probably the app would never reach its, never get released if you're going to be aiming for 100% perfect, like perfection because Android as an OS or even as a platform isn't there yet, like 100%. There are issues. So you need to kind of work around and kind of get your app fast before someone else kind of gets a similar app out and like gets the buzz out of it. Right, right. Interesting. So, two months as as it stands today for a decent app that, and you know, two months is a good time, right? Yeah. Great. So, you know, Nishal, you brought out a really good point that, you know, get yeah, your, that's true. you know, <laughs> so, you know, that you've got to get your uh, features right. You, you, you want its experience to be good. And you know you want the features to be right. In this, I'm assuming that you will hit a few roadblocks uh, in terms of hey, I want to get it out in two months, but it's going to take me two months and fifteen days. What are those main roadblocks that you hit, which actually delay an app launch? Uh, so uh, to start with, especially on Android, when we started out, uh, we we were like really greedy. We were like it has to work on the mobile as well as on a tablet. I think that's that's a wrong notion to start with, and then we had to cut down on just just let's just stick to mobile, the smaller screens, and then let's think about tablet. And it's been eight months we've not got a tablet out, and it's still going well. So uh, maybe first you know you should just be less greedy about what you want out. The other thing is about uh, you know we were recent we redesigned our app after a, uh, initial success, and uh, we were like let's redesign the complete app. And then we realize it's going to take a long time. So even the redesign, we cut it out. We, you know, just designed the screens that are most used. We got it out. And the best thing was we were on TechCrunch just because of this. I mean, we were written about saying we've been redesigned. We are a beautiful app. Whereas we knew internally that we were not complete yet. Right. So I think we, you know, it's important to just cut down because when you think about it, 80% of your users are just going to see a few screens. So just concentrate on them. Just do them right. And then concentrate on the rest of the stuff. It's good to have the Steve Jobs philosophy that even if they don't see it, you still have to, you know, build, ma yeah, make it proper. But then, uh, if you want to get it out, you have to let go of that, I guess. So don't be greedy. Don't try to do too many things. Too many things. Yeah. But and then work on the prioritize. Prioritize exactly. Yeah, sure. that's important. I guess. So Satya, what is it like in Cleartrip? You know, what have you seen as a you're a product manager, and I'm sure you've you've had a lot of this friendly tension with your development <laughs> and design team. Uh, so, what are the main delays which you've seen? So, uh, I think one of uh, the reasons to delay is, uh, which used to be, like which we trying to fine tune now, is the, the estimation on fine tuning. So, roughly whenever we, like what I've seen people usually do is that whenever they estimate a development time, they just estimate development and if they have some senses, they'll probably add QA to it. Okay. They don't add the uh, uh, fine tuning polishing part to it, hmm. which depending upon your release, can take up somewhere about 20 to 30, 35 percent of, of the time, right. the final polishing and fine uh, and fine tuning. Right. So if that is not uh, uh, accommodated in the initial plan, 
then that is one of the reasons that causes delays. So, the later stages according yeah, to Yeah, the last, so when the app is ready, it is ready to be shipped and then the fine tuning because uh, you cannot make out uh, how the app like until you have the app ready on your hand, it is very difficult to find out uh, uh, the fine like the do the polishing bit to it. So, mm -hmm. once you have the app ready, the final polishing that happens after the functionality is done that is one of the things that uh, has to be accommodated, the time for that has to be accommodated in the final plan itself. Right. Right. So, I think that is one of the reasons of whenever we miss that, that is one of the reasons that causes delays. Now, I know the developers at Dexter are like really good and as well as that you have got a decent design team as well. What goes wrong with you guys? Oh, that is the same thing. Um, actually, I mean, as, as a developer, you uh, there is a lot that drives uh, the product development and one of the most important thing is the passion and, and the commitment that you have to uh, to the product. So you get so attached to it emotionally that you you don't want to let go. Uh, <laughs> at a, uh, you know uh, you don't want to let go of a product that's incomplete. I mean, or in, in your head you think it's incomplete. Maybe it's in, it's complete for others for the consumers because they don't know uh, whether what the product roadmap would be. But uh, so I think that's the biggest thing that we faced. Uh, so uh, our engineers try to you know make the app perfect and, and, and uh, I mean at times we, we always have discussions saying that hey let us get a minimum viable product out and let us see what the market says. No, I am not letting you do that <laughs> because uh, you know we know that this could be better and, and then at sometimes they are right and, and sometimes they are wrong. So, uh, you have to be judicious in, in where you draw the line uh, as he said reviews matter. So, I mean my, my learnings would be that you know you get a minimum viable product out that does the core function, the core function. How do you tell your developers that was? It, that's the hardest part. That's, that's the hardest part. That's so, the hardest part. I think that's the problem with working with one of the best teams. So if they have very good developers with you and very good designers with you, then they can't let you do. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to uh, argue with India. them that yeah. uh, you know influence them that say this. So they know that this is you know the coolest thing that they've done, and they, it has to sh it has to be shipped. And then if you have to manage that because you are slipping the deadline, that is one of the tough parts. So, so emotions, are, emotions are the thing that I would say uh, matter um, and how we deal with that. So, Varun, uh, how do you handle a, you know, an, an incomplete product or a product that is taken too long to reach you? When so, someone wants just to, to add to one of our uh, like uh, Excel and uh, even, uh, getting clear to the development and also what he said when he said. So basically what I see one of the major concerns here from developers why they are getting delayed is they do not have most many developers do not follow the android release roadmap. So okay. when they actually get out the app the android version actually brings a new, <laughs> it's a new, uh, new OS altogether new major version and some functionality they have route and functionality run a workaround it is already there in the OS now. <laughs> so this whole bunch of code which is there does not need to exist anymore and they cannot ship something and like it is a lot more difficult in the Apple ecosystem because they will probably block it out of the <laughs> and all that. But in Android you can work around and still have the functionality. But then you need to take a call as to are you going to use the OS or you are going to write your own stuff. And another uh, like issue I have heard from developers is uh, it runs all fine when they are like kind of are doing it in house and when they are actually going to the market and testing it on a consumer's device help breaks yeah, yeah, loose. Yeah. <laughs> like like that another reason I would like to ask developers to test out devices on like devices which are available in the market rather than test it on an ideal device like an access device because everything works fine on it but then you go out and test it on a micro max or a samsung or whatever like <laughs> it just does not work as expected and then they come back to squab and saying why did it go wrong. So. <laughs> there was a nice right smile on all of your faces when you said android kind of improves to faster than your app. Yeah it does. <laughs> so, you know now you have got your app ready, it is it's, it's in the market, quickly just the top three communication channels that has worked for you? Uh, communication you mean to users? Yeah, to users. Uh, How do get, you get, get to it users? out? Uh, I, think, I think the the initial phase uh, a good blog post would help a lot uh, to get the you know right kind of users and at least for us in our case we already had a web app that was running and we had a lot of traffic coming in from the mobile towards our who were using our web on their devices. Uh, we just made sure that we could convert this as well. So, you know, that was the other part. Then the uh, the next best channel I would say is just sending it out to your existing users if you have an existing app. Send an email out, it works really well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that, that works for us. You have one more. <laughs> <laughs> I just shout it out on all your platforms, like go out on, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn and get, get the, 
get people who have their own apps out to actually install your app and try it out because if they like it most times they put it out to their friends and followers so so that's good your circle uh, blogs and and your existing users existing users because and and app developers who have their apps out right. that helps a lot because they have new channels for you and when somebody likes what you built they actually go out and spread it out to their friends so we actually got in touch with a lot of people on linkedin who had their apps out who had millions of downloads and quite a few people actually sent it out as a tweet saying there's a new app out try it out That's so there was a new it does that work? and people do that yeah at least you can send it to me i would do that if i like <laughs> yeah. so yeah it works so satya even even if you deny that you're not as big a company as you are <laughs> you know to the outside world you know it's still clear yeah. trip is a is yeah. a name to, that is known so yeah. how do you go about it so uh, it's a three main so i think uh, we have two common uh, uh, channels uh, that we shall say one is the blog uh, which is uh, the most uh, important channel for us so if you look at any of the app launches uh, we just do an introduction blog post for for the launch and then it's followed up by a very detailed uh, design and dev uh, oriented blog post which attracts a lot of uh, uh, attention in the market so i think blog post is one of the important channels second that initial said that communicating it efficient, uh, efficiently to your own users mm. so uh, people who are already are are on clear trip uh, uh, sending them a, a newsletter uh, or uh, people who are using on the mobile side showing them a banner hey there is an app available uh, and third uh, uh, channel i'd say is uh, is pr uh, that has also worked uh, for us so i think in some of the cases uh, our releases have been picked up from the blog post instead of uh, be reaching uh, uh, some of the editors but uh, if you are doing something which is relevant to the reader of that uh, uh, of that publisher i think communicating it to them also has has worked uh, uh, significantly for us so you when you when you say initial blog post that's on your own platform right yeah, yeah. we have our own blog post here I actually I meant a combination of both. So PR uh, and yeah, and especially when you're just launching an Android app, you don't have anything else. I think you actually have to go to others and beg them to write a blog post. <laughs> no one's gonna come and read your blog post, I guess. And actually, we'll get uh, that. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. These two had a web web platform, and yeah. they had somebody to tell yeah. that oh, we have an Android app. How did yours? How would you go about doing it? You started oh. off with Iris, right? Yeah, yeah. actually, it was a Friday in the wise before, but yeah. <clears throat> um, so. Uh, again you know the idea uh, of friday was was uh, was uh, always marked the school so uh, it was easy for us uh, to talk to bloggers uh, on uh, maybe techcrunch or mashable and people like that and they kind of uh, you know like the whole thing so uh, but you know you have to understand that uh, blogs are like you know are for tech readers it's for tech lovers now these are not the majority that you are trying to you know tap upon these create your initial initial jump kick start but then you have to cross the chasm and uh, to to scale up uh, and for that you need other mediums so uh, you know we would recommend you know get getting people to like you on uh, on your play store page and things like that plus one plus thing one. yeah because that's a good way to uh, you know for app visibility people would uh, you know when people uh, plus one the app and if you are another guy's circle who has actually plus one my app So I mean the the user would new user would come in and maybe read the description there's a good chance of conversion so uh, this is like a non paid way of you know getting people into the system and uh, these people need not be tech lovers as such you know you getting to the masses there so that would be one thing so getting users to evangelize in, in some way not just word of mouth just a uh, plus one action so if, if people like your product i don't think they would hesitate to plus one it and 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 an average we see like uh, around you know 1 in 10 people plus one it so uh, that would be my thing and the third one i don't know uh, cross promotion is a good way of doing it so if you got other apps provided you ensure that the privacy is uh, is always maintained and it's given the priority uh, people would also love it nice. and and he presents a good uh, you know idea that you need could get other app developers to evangelize too have you done it no i haven't but you know now, now that he's uh, in, in his full little cross maybe i'll also explore so i've done it with binil and mr they will promote your app for you yeah. <laughs> all right <laughs> Varun, what you know, other than putting your app up on phone arena, what do you think is the best? Uh, are the other two best ways of you know getting uh, you know traction on the initial traction? Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, I think uh, online, like reaching out, you can reach out to me any app you have. Like if it's interesting, we would like just one basic thing about apps. Like if your app is going to be cool, it's going to get the coverage like more than it deserves. So that's one thing which uh, all of, like most developers kind of like forget when they kind of building an app. Uh, it's going to be really cool. Like it's going to get covered. If you see most of the, uh, I think even just one follower wasn't very popular initially. But then once it got popular, I think the traction it might have got, it's like this goes through the roof because more people word of mouth. Uh, I think word of mouth is a great way to like uh, get your app because if you trust what your uh, friend uh, is using, like an app, and you want to use it, so you would definitely go ahead and install it on your uh, device. So another thing would be probably working with like handset uh, makers. So that's a pretty easy way to like get to the market. Like if you are like if your app is good, and obviously handset makers are looking to preload apps these days in terms of uh, with their phones in the market. And even BlackBerry, for example, is now loading their BlackBerry Messenger on a MicroMax phone. I never thought that would happen, but still, it's uh, getting out uh, to a huge user base. And most often, brands do it for free. If you're a, like a if you're a startup or a small time company, probably if it's a big company, they get commercial. But if it's going to be a start, like a small app, which is they see like promise and belief in it, it's going to get popular. They might like preload it or market it for you for free. So that's one way you could probably uh, get some traction. Another one would be not just bloggers. Probably you should have probably an influencer circle, yeah. like people uh, who are like passionate about technology or even not, but they are willing to try new things out and willing to spare time for your app, like use it and kind of. Give you feedback, and this is probably should be done probably at a pre-release stage, like an invite-only phase, yeah. so that there's some excitement and they feel special kind of using it. I would love to try an app if it's out in the Play Store. I would never really review an app or write about it if it's out in the Play Store already, because users are going to be starting to review it, reviewing it, and I'm not like really You're keen, on, keen on doing it because so as we're going to be targeting uh, to get real coverage from influencers, probably you should probably. Have a invite only phase. Invite them. Get it's also you are getting free uh, kind of uh, consulting from someone because they're going to be giving you free advice. So that's uh, I do do that for a lot of apps like uh, from time to time. And if the app is like really interesting, and I kind of see like a promise in it, uh, like can I do <laughs> do some beta testing for them for nice. free. So, yeah. so influencer circle, and if your app is really cool, you think talking to device manufacturers is also yeah. not a bad idea. But one thing was common along all this, like get the blog to write about you. And, and with my experience on your story, at your story itself, I've written a lot about apps. And uh, you know, the developers have come back to us and said, hey, you know, that blog really helped us get that initial traction. How do you talk to journalists as such? Journalists at these specific blogs, uh, you know, to get them to write to write about you. You know, let's say that you know they haven't heard of your app yet. It's the first time you're pitching to them. What's that? What's the right way to do? You back to them. <laughs> just kidding. Oh, come on. I, I, <laughs> no, I think I think uh, if you write to someone out of the blue, it's really rare that they're going to get back to you. At least uh, what I've seen is it's it's better to now. Usually they have a profile on Twitter. They are on LinkedIn. They're on Facebook. Probably try to connect with them on these channels first, and uh, you know just just start a conversation instead of just sending out an email or something saying I have an app please review it or this is what it does. Uh, try to get in touch with them and try to get feedback for your app rather than asking them to you know write about it. Uh, this is what happened to me uh, around three years ago when I first wrote to TechCrunch I just wrote that I've done something like this and Michael Arrington happened to use it he found a bug and he sent me a screenshot. So it was not at all about reviewing the app it was just about he used it he found you know something wrong with it he sent me feedback and the next thing i know he wrote about it so so i think you know you know now you'll you'll get a lot of feedback emails now. <laughs> so i think it's it's important to ask for feedback from the uh, right set of people who are going to write it and you need not really target just specific blogs as such because even app developers when i said you should write to app developers they most of them have their own blogs personal blogs which are read by a lot of people so just just get a you know have this list of maybe 50 or 100 people in your head who you know are of value to the ecosystem and g get in touch with them and tell them to check your app out and give you some feedback and then when you do this you will have a few good reviews out i think that's a great way to start and eventually yeah, in the end back if they don't do anything just tell them to review it <laughs> not that it works but yeah so do very that. indirect way of asking him 
to review my please give me feedback, feedback. on the app and yeah. then <laughs> you probably have it a little easier right like reaching yeah. out to blogs or uh, uh, press is is fairly easier for you is uh, that is that all right to say no it's 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 never so easy right. so uh, the way we do it uh, is that we try to uh, put more efforts in building uh, the product uh, so well that it gets picked up uh, by the okay. market so i think that's where our, our effort goes in so uh, like uh, we mentioned that if your product is super cool uh, people will also be willing to pick it up uh, another thing that nishil mentioned is that we also do have some people who uh, with we, we share feedback so uh, we involve them a little early if instead of launching the product and then telling them hey there's a product out in the market why don't you uh, review it we launch involve them a little early in the when we are close to finishing stage we involve them take feedback and then ship the product so they also feel a little more involved in the process and if they like the product they'll obviously uh, cover it if they don't like it uh, we can't push them right so i've seen a lot of articles on, about you on techcrunch hmm. how did you speak to them uh, initially what was your first pitch actually i've written a lot of emails to them um, and yeah basically begged them to cover it <laughs> so uh, it didn't actually always get through uh, but what made it really easy uh, for us was uh, creating iris now iris was a eight hour hack on on siri, siri and basically got a lot of reviews and and that was android sensor to uh, ios iphone 4s so uh, it got a lot of reviews and it got covered by a lot of blogs and uh, including techrunch and mashable whatever you name it so uh, so then it was easier for for me uh, to get to bloggers because i already had a brand name that uh, it's being it's an app that's been used by a lot of people and it was a hack and it was done in 8 hours and all that so it is more easy but uh, you know even if you even if you come to know of uh, of uh, bloggers it's it's again about about relationship management so it's like knowing a person and then how you treat them and all that right so uh, even in blogs uh, on the tier 1 uh, segment so if you look at make tech crunch and mashable now tech crunch won't cover you if mash covering you yeah unless like you, you are super funder and and, and Unless you're a big, bigger company. Now, uh, these are things that so you gotta play your game right. As in, like you know, you need to know what information you divulge to one blogger and, and uh, what would, would you give to a bigger one, right? So uh, you know, you make yourself more attractive to, to them. I mean, I think that would be my way of doing this. So, what are three no signs when you when someone pitches to you? Three things that you so don't want. Just to hide, do. never beg. <laughs> <laughs> That's a begging. In even the first line of the like email, I would never ever bother. Please review so my yeah, like, 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 like no, Satya said, if it's uh, like you need to take like criticism, like criticism or even not getting covered like positively. So we get like so many pictures every day, and we can't be reviewing. Uh, like funny, uh, funny enough, like probably seven out of ten apps we've covered are probably discovered, self-discovered, not the ones which have been pitched for. Wow. So because most of the cool apps, like we end up like using as users, and we kind of cover it, and not really the pictures because we get so many pictures, and half of it is like. And never ever use a standard pitching like format. Format <laughs> like most of these American uh, like app companies hire a PR firm and kind of send out a blast to a huge uh, list of people, and it never really ends up in like real traction. And they ask me why, and it's like it's a wrong way of doing it. So you never really like have a blank like a template to pitch out to people. You need to get personal. Right. So you need to get personal, get to know them. Like how do they work? For example, if an app. For example, if they if Dexter, etc., gave it to uh, TechCrunch, we would never cover it because it's an exclusive to them. Right. We would never really cover it. But if it's given on an equal priority, you know, with an embargo or something like that, like a deadline, like ClearTrip did something like that, and we were happy to work with them because they gave us an early look at the app and everything. So, and so that's where so probably a no would be to not. Like, you should be very careful. That's a whole PR like marketing stuff. It's not really uh, developer thing. But if you are a single app, uh, single developer running an app, you are the marketer. You are the developer and you are the company, so you need to be very careful while dealing with uh, like uh, bloggers or influencers or like kind of uh, the media. So that's one thing. And uh, another no would be to like just like you should probably follow up, but not keep pestering them. Because <laughs> I think Michael has written a lot about this on Twitter as well. That there's this guy, but still, there's a, like a kind of you should find a find a balance between. Uh, pestering and like giving a reminder, like a friendly reminder. Once every two days. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so it still again boils down to the same thing. If the app is kind of uh, like really like interesting and has a value add, and if like uh, so, th this is how media works. You're going to cover something, and users are going to download it and going to enjoy it. Like it's a win for the 
like the whoever is covering it is going to like gain some kind of value out of it the entire ecosystem gain something out of it so you write something about an app which already has a million downloads and the user is obviously already using it doesn't really bring any value to the validation to the table so if say it's an app which is barely having like 100k downloads but with like a five star rating but nobody really knows about it so i would rather write about something like that uh, rather than write about something which is already popular so so that's something yeah. so obviously now you know blogs address a small group of people they are your power users they'll talk about you they'll use you a lot but then once that is done you know you got to think about spending some money on it right without on the you know adwords and all that sort of thing the guy sitting right next to me has what 2 3 million downloads yeah, no, and he's actually not spent any money on it yet and i'm i'm really surprised mm-hmm. how did you do it? i'm not stingy that way but yeah <laughs> uh, i i think we 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 follow a internal marketing strategy and uh, which does not really involve money not yet uh, so it's been working what we do is we make sure that whoever downloads our app and uses it they they go on to share it with their friends on one of the social networks and how we do it is something that i've been trying to spread around it's called the etc strategy it's it's e stands for ego t for temptation c for curiosity where you you play with these three parts of a user so uh like for example one of the features uh, is logged in our app and you get to use it only if you t- talk about it so you know that's one way that has helped us you need to be bold at times if you don't want to spend money but you know this is how we've been going around doing it so what would you say is like etc that's that's pretty yeah. big <laughs> yeah yeah i made it up <laughs> <laughs> so you know how much when is the right time to start spending money and uh, how much is too much uh, i think when i think for for a uh, it depends on the scale that you are running uh, i think it's a very good time to spend money once you start earning something from the app uh, spending money uh, on an app uh, that you are building as a part time uh, a hobby app uh, doesn't make sense at all so uh, once you start uh, uh, making money or at least you start looking at the potential that yeah i am reaching that tipping point i think that that's a good point to to start spending money on the app right right vinil yeah. you are a big advocate on you know not spending too much but then you still have uh, spent on facebook quite yeah i mean I, and and facebook has been pretty big for app developers what is your advice on you know kasha uh, in a, uh, i tried playing around with a few ad providers but i i found that facebook has a best targeting system um you could target users by the devices that they use and the demography and and a lot of other states uh, as in like even if you like a, let's say for example if i'm targeting a samsung customer now uh, i could do that on facebook because he would have liked the samsung page there on on so so i i could target people on real interest on on other platforms i, I wouldn't i would i don't see that I mean, as in like they would say that they would help you target on devices and os versions and, and demographics but uh you know with specific interest how how do an ad provider know that unless you are facebook yeah. so i I'm, i'm kind of advocating that because i think uh, it also helps you build a brand for yourself you know yeah. and a lot of people who uh, you use your facebook app on on your phone see the ad and then there's a good chance of conversion there rather than you know on any other side so people are browsing through it because they have have time it's not like you know they try to kill the time on facebook right. and then when you when you give that ad at that right time and then you know, you get better conversion but i mean i again you know i don't want to spend too much also so this there's always a way to limit your spend daily way so, so facebook because of the fact that you can target to specific demographics and interest and interest so that that's good so you know what are, what are other uh, you know ad spending money like we've not touched ad networks yet so you know what do you think what other than facebook and you know not spending money any dc i think yeah, i would also like uh, agree with satya about that as long as your app is not making any money spending don't like spend on it. spending on it just doesn't make sense because if you see these many big big name app makers like app shops they do that and they don't really uh, get much traction it's just they just get an install so it doesn't make it an active user so like getting an active user means that you need to have something like a, like an interest level for the user in the app so as a, he suggested facebook does have a good amount of uh, traction even 
uh, if you're targeting uh, like a user through mobile ads, like say an in-app ad, ad, like for example on Android, like AdMob, you could have in-app ads. Probably going to target apps, or I don't know if there's like app level targeting or whether uh, category level targeting. Probably apps in your category you could target. Like if you're a travel app, probably if I'm competing with Clutter, probably I can try to. Clutter <laughs> doesn't run ads, but I'm just running like an example. So if I'm uh, trying to uh, make an app which is like a vacation hunter or something i could probably run uh, ads on ads some, on some category uh, like uh, like app on a, in the same similar category and yeah that that would definitely bring in a lot of uh, like in, active installs not just installs but i think it would be a slightly more expensive than facebook but then probably i think it would uh, in the long run that's probably uh, the option as well, which i've heard from developers so justify spend based on roi if you're making money yeah. from it spend only then and if you're spending facebook works like really well and you know then you could always try uh, ad networks and all that but you know it seems like the bottom line is just make a cool app man <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's what yeah, that will get you traction yeah. <laughs> right yeah. so you know based on that i'm sure all of you three have got competitors right mm. who's that one app that you see like man these guys have done it right so other than that, yeah <laughs> not in the same space right not you, in the same space. Space. who do you think is like You know, that one app that you really admire who has done uh, this app prep really well. I I use any dot do. I think I think it's it's beautiful. It's made right and uh they they just, you know, they don't they don't even ask you to spread or talk about them and you just want to do it. Um the other day I was just having a conversation with a friend and he happened to tell me, you know, there's a cool app I use and I like what is like any dot do. And I was already it's using it and awesome. but yeah it's it's really awesome people just want to talk about it like just yeah. how many people use any dot do here so the now no, the rest of them are going to download, download it see uh, yeah. satya uh, i think i'll 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 take uh, mailbox as i pick uh, mailbox uh, i think that's a brilliant app uh, doing uh, something very rudimentary such as like handling emails uh, in in a much beautiful and the way. waiting queue they had for the and uh, <laughs> getting uh, oh, yeah, so beta. yeah so they had uh, uh, i think about uh, 300000 people pre registered before the app was launched <laughs> i think that's one of the coolest things one can ever do so i mailbox. think i'll yeah i think i'll pick up any mailbox users here it's only on ios right yes sir ouch been in years i probably say highlight and uh, snapchat of course snapchat yeah it's fun right i started using snapchat because everyone was talking about it so yeah <laughs> i just wanted to see what in this made it turn down 3 billion dollars okay okay snapchat the money support <laughs> yeah so yeah i wanted to talk about mailbox as well because i myself was on the waiting list for like a quite a while <laughs> but i got him i just wanted to check it out as to like figure out what the hell is that yeah, yeah. let me just check it out like i like constantly checking my phone to see where i've got him or not i was like 100000 user in the waiting line I literally was like playing with my phone for like two days, to, like, like figure out. So that's how we kind of build. Like I kind of even cursed them as well, saying like, "You, you should have just let me into the app and made me use it." But then that's really worked for them because they got like a huge spike in the number of installs in the initial few days. So that that's probably how you probably uh, do it. But sadly, it's not on iOS. It's uh, it's sad, not on Android, yeah. but on iOS. So, so exclusivity. Exclusivity really works. That's why that's like something like a. It's like probably the next stage of uh, invite only thing. Like they did it at a like a even at a market level. Even after the app, even AV8 did it with their uh, yeah. uh, app recently. So that's something which would work. But probably as a consumer, I would get a bit irritated if that becomes a trend. Because <laughs> and then probably you need to um, not make the consumer wait too long. Just do tease, but don't make them wait too long. So <laughs> that's uh, thing. So other some of the other apps probably some apps. Like for example, WhatsApp. They, I don't know, know if they actually spend any money advertising. It's I don't know. I don't think they did. It was a free app, but probably they have charged about a dollar for a couple of years. But look at how kind of traction they've made it a new beat, like medium. So it speaks for itself and a good communication tool. And that's a cool app. Another app which is one of my favorites is Wonderlist. Wonderlist. Yes. Falls in the same category any dot two. They were free pretty much like till for the last couple of years. A friend of mine recommended it, and I kind of installed it, and I was like. Okay, this is something which solves my issues. It was like cross-platform, very well done. And there's another app also which is called Tripit. They also handle uh, some stuff fairly well, like you forward your emails, right. search, uh, and it, it brings up your itinerary and everything. So yes, these are some of the apps which are 
like mailbox, uh, WhatsApp, Tripit, and yeah. So I think it's unanimous. Uh, one advice that everybody would in this panel say just build a really good app which looks good and gets the job done. But other than that, one advice for, and this is the last question, so one advice for everyone who's launching an app. Just, just build it right. I think that's more important. Just don't screw up in the first version. You know, the web days you could, but not in the app store. Satya? Uh, I think given a choice between a, a feature and finishing the app properly, I think pick the polishing part. Uh, don't focus on adding new features, cooling, like adding more functionality on the app. Just keep it as basic as possible and do it really, really well. Right. Uh, Build a minimum viable product first <laughs> at the earliest and then listen to your customers. So, what they say. Right, right. And so, get out your app really soon. Like, don't wait too much, but get out a working product, not a half baked one. Like, cut down on features, like just said, but get a polished product and make sure you run it on multiple devices and not, don't just test it on one phone or like something. So, the market is so, uh, like, uh, like diverse in terms of devices right now and you are going to just be burning your like uh, like time and effort and everything by just running it on a device, single device, although Android has gotten a lot better now, still there is a lot of difference uh, even uh, today, so run your apps on as many devices as you can. I think the, uh, I think that is an important point uh, and I can probably give them, give them a tip, so uh, for Android it is like practically impossible to have all those devices available as test, right. so uh, the way we do it is uh, uh, we incentivize the people in the organization, whosoever is Android, to test the app test and give us the feedback. So, or bug your friends, or like whoever yeah. has a device. <laughs> yeah, I, I really hope this was of value to you guys. I couldn't have thought of a better panel to have brought on to, for this particular topic. Thank you so much for making it here. Thank you for it was really cool. Audience.